Welcome back. In this lesson, we are looking at balancing equations. So to start off with, let's talk about the law of conservation of matter. In a chemical reaction, when we write any sort of equation, we need to be sure that we aren't creating or destroying mass. So previously, we've seen law of conservation of energy, that if you start with a certain amount of energy, you can't add or destroy any of that amount, but you can transfer it from one thing to another. The same thing applies with this law of conservation of matter. The mass, which we're referring to as the matter, can't be changed. If I start with 50 grams of total reactants, I'm going to have to finish with 50 grams of total products. It's a fundamental law. We cannot change it. In particular, when we look at balancing equations, it means that if we have two of a certain atom on one side of the equation, we must have two of the same atom on the other side. The only time this is different if we have nuclear reactions where an element can actually change to become another element. But in general chemistry and the chemistry we're doing so far, this doesn't happen. So if I have two oxygens on one side, on the, the left side for the reactants, I must have two oxygens on the right side. I can't create or destroy oxygen. This is where balancing equations comes in. So what we do is we use coefficients to make sure that we have the same number of elements on both sides. So let's take a look. The coefficients we talked about in the, in the previous lesson, we talked about those subscripts and the coefficients. The subscripts, remember, are the number of the individual element that comes before it. And the coefficient means it's that number of the entire compound that it sits in front of. So for example, two lots of H2O, the, the subscript two here tells you that you've got two hydrogen. The big two means you've got two lots of H2O. So therefore we've got four hydrogen, two oxygen. So we use these coefficients and we can actually change these. So just like when you think about sort of common factors, we can multiply both sides by the same number. That's okay, but we can never change the subscripts. Because if I change this and just go, well, let's just make this H3O, that's a very different compound. And in fact, that's not even possible. So it's really important that we don't change the subscripts. We can only ever add or change coefficients in front of it. Let's take a look. In this example, I have H2, which is hydrogen gas, and I add it to Cl2, which is chlorine. This produces HCl, which hopefully from last lesson you identify Starts with an H, so it's an acid. Chlorine, it's hydrochloric acid. So it looks like this. Two H's, two Cl's, gives you an HCl. But hopefully you're looking at this and going, well, hang on, that doesn't agree with the law of conservation of matter. I don't have the same number of elements. But what I can do is I can just put a two here. And that's okay. If I put a two on this side, change the coefficient, I now have two lots of HCl. If you check it, I've got two hydrogens, two hydrogens, we're good. Two chlorine, two chlorine, everything is balanced. Because we're using an arrow, I don't have to do two on, on the other side. It's not like in mathematics that I can't just change one side and I have to change the other side. Because we're using an arrow, we're saying it goes to, it's completely fine to just add numbers however you want. You don't need to equate them on both sides of the equation. Otherwise, we're going to end up back where we started. Because if we start unbalanced, if I multiply everything by two, still unbalanced. So it doesn't actually solve the problem. Let's look at an example. I've got magnesium plus oxygen. It goes to magnesium oxide, MgO. One approach for doing these questions, which can be really useful, particularly in the more complex examples, is to count up all the atoms on each side. So on the left side, I've got one magnesium. On the right side, I've got one magnesium. On the left side, I've got two oxygens. And on the right side, I've got one oxygen. So they're not equal. Equal for magnesium, not equal for oxygen. In this example, yeah, it's pretty obvious to see that straight away. But in more complex examples, it's not immediately obvious. And particularly if you struggle with these balancing equations as we go further through, this approach can be really useful. So what do I do? The numbers aren't balanced. I'm going to need to add coefficients to make up for any shortages. So think about, in this case, where do I need another O? 
I need it on the right hand side. So at this stage, we'll just, you might just say, all right, well, let's just put a two in front of that. And now I've got two lots of MGO. Now recheck your numbers. I no longer have one on this side. I've actually got two. So I've got two MGs, two O's. Suddenly the O's are good, but the MGs are not good. So they're still not actually equal. You can see two O's, two MGs, but one MG. But hopefully now you can see what the next step's gonna be. I just slap a two in front, check all my totals again, everything is balanced, we're good. So this equation actually would be written 2mg plus O2 goes to 2mgO. Fully balanced chemical equation. Often the examples we've seen so far where we just do really basic, like we've said mg plus O2 goes to mgO, isn't actually the true equation because we ended up with two compounds of magnesium oxide. Now that we've seen how to balance it, we will try and use that as much as we can and always ensure that our answers are balanced. Let's take a look at a video that explains this in a little bit more detail. Let's have a go at balancing an equation. Sodium hydroxide is a soluble salt, but most other hydroxides are insoluble. They can be made by reacting with sodium hydroxide, like this. A good way to balance an equation is to use a table to keep track of everything. You can list the number of each atom on the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation, then compare to see if they are the same. Remember, you can only change the big number in front of compounds, which says how many molecules you have. You can't break up bonds to make it balance. Try filling in this table now. Pause the video whilst you add up the atoms. Are you ready? These are the numbers you should have found. We can see that the metals are balanced, but there are three times as many chlorine atoms on the left and three times as many oxygen and hydrogen atoms on the right. So let's multiply the compound containing chlorine on the right by three and the compound containing hydroxide on the left by three. Is it balanced? Pause the video whilst you fill in the table again. What do you get? The equation is now balanced. Let's take a look at another example. In this case, I've got aluminium plus hydrochloric acid goes to aluminium chloride plus hydrogen gas. Is it balanced? And then I want you to try and balance it yourself. So pause the video, have a go at balancing it. I'm gonna go through the solutions in just a second. First step, if you're following this process, is to count up the elements on both sides. Aluminium is good, hydrogen is not, chlorine is not. So we need one more hydrogen on the left, two more chlorine on the left. So let's start with that. We'll put a three in there. Chlorine is happy, we've got three and three, but not the hydrogen. And what we often find in this example is that because the left-hand side has one H and the right-hand side has two, it can be difficult to find a balance because now I've got three H's and I can't put decimals. I can only have whole numbers. So I can't have a 1.5 here. So then you have to go, all right, well, what's a multiple that's gonna work? And then almost work backwards from that. So I'm gonna change this to be a six. And now if we check it, I add a three on the right-hand side because I've got six H's. I need three on the right-hand side. I've now got six and six. I've got six chlorines and I've got two lots of Cl3, which is six chlorines. So everything is all good, we're balanced. And this, sometimes the hardest um, versions of these can just simply be finding those uh, factors, those multiples, so that we can get the same number and then work backwards from that point. Otherwise, sometimes you can end up chasing your tail where you add something and then you realize you've added too many on one side and you add something on the other side and you just keep going back and forth. So have a go at these balancing questions. I've given you four on the screen, pause the video, write the solutions, and then I'll go through them in a minute. Okay, let's take a look. So first one, we simply add twos. The second one, we add a two to the O2, the oxygen, and a two to the H2O, the water. And the third one, we need to add a few. So two on the lithium, 
2 on the, what is it? It starts with an H, so it's an acid. And we've got a nitrogen, so it's nitric acid. And 2 to the lithium nitrate. And in the last one, I needed some multiples. So I need 4 aluminium, 3 oxygen goes to 2 aluminium oxides. So from here, there's a couple of things. I want you to have a go at this balancing chemical equations game. So this is linked um, in the next quest. Once you've completed the game, there is then a worksheet that is also linked that you can have a go at to get some practice at different levels of these balancing equations. And we'll do some activities next time. See you then.